Now, after understanding what are stresses and the types of stresses, let's understand what is strain. Okay. Now, strain in a broad term means nothing but deformation. So, when a body gets deformed, we say that the body is being strained or the strain is being produced in the body. Okay. Mathematically, strain, which is denoted by either small e or epsilon, whatever you want to denote it with, or epsilon. This is nothing but the ratio of the deformation. So you'll have the deformation. Deformation means the change in the dimension of that body upon the original size. Upon the original size. Okay. So if I talk about tensile loading, let us say this is the body and this is the axis. Let us say the original length of the body is capital L and we are applying a load, a tensile load P onto this body. So what will happen? This tensile load P will elongate it. So after the elongation, let us say the body takes up a dimension like this. Now you can see that the thickness has also reduced. We will talk about this thickness reduction or thickness increase during compression in a later video. So now the new length, the new length is let us say L plus delta L, wherein delta L is the increment, the net increment or the total increment that this L has in order to increase the length of the entire body. Okay, so what is the increase in length? The increase in length is final length minus the initial length. So that deformation, deformation is equal to the final length, which is L plus delta L minus the initial length, which is capital L. So this will be nothing but delta L. Okay, and if you divide this by the original size, original size, so this is L. So mathematically is nothing but delta L by L if you are taking the uh, you know dimension of length. And this is for tensile because this is positive for a tensile loading scenario. What if you have a compression or a compressive loading scenario? In a compressive loading scenario, this will reduce. So for a compression loading, this will become L minus delta L. So you can see that delta L is a negative quantity. So for the compressive strain, so this can be denoted as tensile strain. That is a positive strain, which means if the tensile stress is positive, this will also produce a positive strain in the body. Whereas a compressive strain would be negative delta L upon L because this is less than zero and it produces a negative stress as well. Okay. Now we had a third load which was the shearing load. So shearing load produced the shearing stress. It also produced a shearing strain. Now what is that strain? Because there is distortion taking place. Distortion means some kind of angular, uh, you can say displacement or some kind of angular movement. So if you redraw that diagram again, this body was there. Okay. So these two points are fixed. So if you apply a load like this, the top two points will you know, translate in a direction you will have a new shape which will look like this. Okay. So you can see that there is an angular deformation. There is an angular deformation. Let us say phi over here. So this phi is the deformation we discuss or we take in the case of shearing. So this phi over here which is the angular deformation, angular deformation Okay, this is called shear strain. 
Okay, so shear strain is produced in the case of a shearing stress or a shearing load scenario, and this is an angular deformation, so it will be in radians. Okay, so the units of shear strains is the radians. What about the units of tensile strain and compressive strain? They will have no units because this is length by length, the units get cancelled. Again, this is length by length, the units are cancelled. But this will have some units okay so this was all about straining now let's move on to a very very important topic that is hooke's law 